Today, we are going to perform the assessment of ears and hearing. First, you have to assemble your equipment for systematic approach and systematic performance of your activities. So we do have your alcohol for hand hygiene. Of course, for protection, we do have your clean gloves. We do have your tuning fork. And of course, your otoscope with different sizes. So after you prepare the equipment, you have to introduce yourself to your client. Hi ma'am, good morning. I am Fitz, your nurse for today from Pamantasa ng Munsod ng Pasig. Uh, may I know your name? Connie Pas. Hi ma'am, how do you want to be called? Connie. Connie, okay. Connie lang tamda po kayo? 57. Alright, so at this time ma'am, we are going to perform the assessment of ears and hearing. Okay. So this would be necessary for uh, assessment and future management of your primary care physician. So first, I would have to do hand hygiene. So we have to apply your gloves after doing the hand hygiene. So it is necessary for us to perform hand hygiene prior to the procedure and of course after to prevent cross-contamination cross of microorganism from the nurse to the patient, from the patient to the nurse, and from cross-contamination from one patient to the other. So make sure also that you have closed or provided privacy to your clients by closing the curtains or having privacy curtains and of course closing the doors. Make sure that you have a well-fitted um, gloves. So at this point, while you are fixing your gloves, you may ask now the patient's client history in terms of ears and hearing. Mom, do you have any uh, previous ear problems? None. And how about a uh, history in the family of uh, death? None. Any medications that you have used uh, for the treatment of your ears? None. Uh, how about hearing difficulty? None. Uh, that's good. So make sure that your client is positioned proper, <laughs> properly. So the best position for the assessment is sitting upright. So Remember that the techniques you have to perform are inspection, palpation, and just the two. So after that, we start by assessing the auricles of your patient. So you have to look for the pina of the patient. How can you uh, move to the side? Uh, inspect for the, the size, the, any presence of discoloration, and for any presence of serum in the outside. So, you may pull the pin up. Mom, do you feel or experience any pain? None. Downwards? None. And of course, backward. You do the same procedure at the other side. Okay? Mom. So, again, you look for the color, any presence of serum in, and pull the pin up, down, and backwards. So, at this point, we are to utilize your otoscope. So the otoscope is utilized for inspection of the ear canal and as well as the ear grafts. So by using the otoscope, we are also to visualize the ear grafts and make sure that the normal um, inspection or assessment of the ear grafts is fairly, fairly white or fairly gray in appearance. So you may do hold the otoscope downwards or upwards depending on to your uh, depending on to your te techniques so ma'am make sure that for adults you have to pull the pin upwards for three years old and up and you have to pull the pin downwards then backwards for pediatric patients to straighten the the ear canal okay so ma'am can you feel backward. So make sure that the patient is tilted back, backward to also help you visualize the, the ear canal. Mom, I'll just insert 
the autoscope. Uh, okay. Tell me if there would be any presence of you for this conference. So I am now inspecting that there are some presence of serumin from the patient, and I have seen that the ear canal is present, has serumin, and of course, you have also to inspect the eardrum for the tympanic membrane of the patient. At this point, the tympanic membrane of the patient is intact and properly gray in appearance. So we'll do the same at the other side. So mom, can you move? So again, ask the patient to think of that words. So I have seen that the patient's uh, ear canal and eardrum are intact and with presence of ceremony on both left and the right side. So this point, after checking the uh, eardrum and ear canal, we have to inspect now the hearing acuity of the patient. We can do this by doing the Weber test, Ryan test, and of course the, the whisper test. So at this point, I'll be doing the whisper test first. So ma'am, uh, I'll be standing behind you about 1 to 1.5 meters and uh, I'll be whispering some words which you have to take. Okay, alright. I would just like you to cover one ear first so we can assess uh, one by one. Okay. Cover your left ear ma'am. Can you repeat ma'am? The weather is fine. So at this point, the patient was able to uh, mention the phrase that I have uh, told her by whispering. So ma'am, let's move now to the other side. Again. So. I can't hear it. I am beautiful. All right. So the patient was able to... Uh, to repeat the phrase correctly on the third attempt. So at this point, I am going to utilize the tuning fork for the assessment of Weber and um, Ryan test. These are necessary for the assessment of sensory neural hearing loss. Okay? For the Weber's test, uh, it is necessary to assess the lateralization of sounds. No? It assesses if there would be presence or, or equalization or equal sounds on the left and the right ears. Okay, so you have to activate the tuning fork first by either tapping at the back of your hands, like this one, or by pinching or pressing the tuning fork using your index finger and the thumb by doing this. Right? So at this point, I would like to use my middle finger and the uh, Mom, I'll be placing the tuning fork on the top of your forehead and tell me if there would be one side of the ear that you hear it louder. Okay. okay. See? Alright. So at this point, the patient were able was able to hear the tuning fork or the vibration of the tuning fork equally both left and the right. I will be going to perform now the Rhine test. Rhine test is necessary for the assessment of uh, conduction hearing loss. So we have to locate first the mastoid process of your patient. So activate the tuning fork, place the, the end of the tuning fork to the mastoid process and wait until the patient does not hear any sound vibration. After that, you remove the tuning fork from the mastoid process and let the patient uh, hear by air conduction. So ma'am, I'll be putting the tuning fork at the back of your ears, then tell me when you when the vibration stops. Okay. So the patient was able to hear the vibration after 
the end of the vibration from the mastoid process then to the air conduction. So it means that the patient's uh, air conduction is longer than bone conduction, which is a normal finding. Let us do it again on the other side of the ears, just the left side. So, I'm just doing it. So it has the same uh, findings that air conduction is longer than bone conduction with your patient. So after that, we, are, we have already ended the procedure. Make sure that you have to remove your gloves. You instruct the, patients, the patient on what to do next. Perform hand hygiene and make sure to document your procedure.